Hey guys, welcome back to the farm. We've got a winter blast rolling through the Midwest as we speak. That's why I'm in my office. I told you I was gonna get in here and talk to you about a few things. I've got a farm video playing on the green screen behind us because that's what we're gonna talk about is farming. Uh, how to transfer a $10 million farm without paying any taxes. We'll get to that in a minute. But first and foremost, uh, why do you want to transfer a farm? Main reason being is we want to secure that baby and protect it. Protect all the hard work, physical labor, mental stress that, that's gotten this far. Um, make sure it goes in the future. It's the elephant in the room. All my travels the last couple of years out of state, all these different farm meetings, I've, in not just dairy but crop, I've talked to a lot of guys. I'm not afraid to go up to them and just start a conversation and even try to dig in a little bit and see what their operations like. Do they have a son, a daughter going to take over? And what I found was that oftentimes there is one there and they don't know how to get the ball rolling or they don't have a son or a daughter and they're in their 70s and they don't know what they're going to do. They might have to liquidate the whole kit and caboodle and deep down they don't want that. They wish they could keep it going. So if you do have a son or daughter or you are the son or daughter watching this and you want to get the ball rolling on your farm to keep it going to the next generation uh, in the future, listen up. Be, be thankful that, uh, that you got family in that position because some of these guys don't have that. And uh, I can tell you they're, they're kind of sad about it. So first and foremost, how to, first thing you have to do is you have to start the conversation with your family, with your dad, your grandfather, whoever it might be, with your brothers. Uh, the sad part is that conversations usually does not get started very easily and sometimes it just never gets started from what I found. So um, what happened with us, and I can tell you this is going to be a lot about us, not exact but pretty close, um, usually a tragedy will strike and that will make you want to act. Uh, three and a half years ago we lost my mom. Um, it's not even to say that just right now it's hard to to get out be honest uh, but anyway it, the farm we were we weren't in any position there was three boys we we're all about 40 years old been on the farm for close to 20 years it took losing mom to realize what a vulnerable position our farm was in now you've got a 70 year old dad who's in charge of everything and you realize how fast life can change you better get things locked up you want to lock it in because if, if it's not and something happens to him and he's the only one on the bank accounts, your bank accounts could be froze, uh, you can't operate the farm anymore, uh, he's the only one on the deeds, it, it, it could be ugly. You could lose the whole thing just because you didn't plan properly. So don't let it be tragedy that, that gets you started. Get started because you know that's the right thing to do. So what's the first thing you got to do? Number one. You need to find a, me a mediator, uh, someone in between that can help bridge the, the gap of speaking because family, <laughs> it's hard to communicate sometimes because you're all so vested, you're, it gets emotional, um, you care so much, so it's sometimes hard to put that into words. Um, you could get, I would say stay away from a family member as a mediator, um, a lawyer, you would think they would be the most skilled, but oftentimes I've had bad I had a bad experience with a lawyer once, so I, I'm not recommending one of them. You will need a lawyer in the end to draw everything up and finalize everything. But my recommendation would be find a farm accountant, and that's what we used. Uh, we were lucky. Our farm accountant is a father and son team. Dad's about 70, so he, he represented more of my father's side of the whole thing, and he understood. And they passed their accounting firm down to this guy. He's more our age. He's 45. So father and son, they've actually helped transition a lot of farms over the past 20 years or, or so. So they've got experience with it. Find one of them. If you can't find one of them, you can ask me who we use here in Michigan, and, and they do consulting work. Maybe you'll be able to have to reach out to them. But they, they ask some hard questions because it's a tough situation, but in the end, it's got to be done. And then one more point on that. You're using a farm accountant because they know how farms run. They understand the bottom line is not, it's tight. And they understand also that there's a lot of sweat equity involved. And that sweat equity has got to be 
added up. One thing to note is the process, once you get this ball rolling, it takes time. Uh, we lost mom three and a half years ago and we're just now buttoning this up. It took close to two years to finally finalize everything. So I'm urging you just, just take the first step and get the ball rolling. Okay, so you got the mediator in place. You've got everybody involved, whether it's you and brothers or just you and your dad, and you have your first meeting. The first thing you're gonna do, um, what we did was, you all have gotta come up with a, a common goal. What do you want to happen? What does dad want to happen? And usually that goal is gonna be pretty darn close. Uh, ours was, we wanna transfer this farm into the next generation. We want this farm to go on. And for that to happen, uh, it, both parties are going to have to uh, sacrifice a little bit. It's not just going to just boom, boom, and it's just going to happen. You're not just going to be able to write Dad a $10 million check and he can go on his way and we're all going to sing Kumbaya. It just doesn't work like that. Farming's, I've often said it, uh, you don't farm for the money, you farm for the lifestyle, you farm for the family. Another thing I want to note is, is it's best if you can have your, your farm in separate entities. Um, like for example, we have all our land is in an entity, our dairy is in one, dairy, cattle, barns, operation, and then your equipment could all be lumped into one. That helps uh, spread the risk, liability uh, reasons, you know, say if someone got hurt on a tractor, uh, God forbid, well, they couldn't touch the dairy or the land and for those reasons. But also, when you're going to transfer these farms, you need it set up. Ours is an LLC. You need it set up where you can transfer shares. Um, that, that just makes it a whole lot easier, especially if there's multiple partners coming in. So if you don't have that done, you might want to look into doing that. So step one, find a mediator. Hopefully a farm accountant can help you. Number two, you're going to find a common goal between you, your dad, your brothers, and everybody involved. What's the goal? Hopefully it's the farm to continue on for another 50 years. That, okay, number three, here's the tough one. How much money is dad gonna get? How much does, does, uh, does he need to live on? Um, that's tough because that, that depends on the person, depends on how their lifestyle is. Now hopefully when they're at this point, they don't have any bills personally. Um, they're you know 70 years old, hopefully everything's paid for. And important to know, any debt that comes with the farm obviously gets transferred with the farm. So he's not going to have any of that debt. But, you know, I had the accountants, some of their advice was, you know, every, every guy's different. They've had it where a guy, um, one farmer didn't want anything. I mean, that's extremely rare. They must have been very well off. But, but, but they, they need enough. You need to have, be able to pay them enough where they don't have to roughly pay another bill in their life as long as they live. And then some and some. I mean, they deserve it all, honestly. They spent their whole life on this farm. They deserve $10 million if you could give it to them, but it's just not how it works. So we want to take care of them as best as possible, but the farm's still got to come to survive. But So that's, that's a tricky one. Um, so that's where I say it's going to be some give and take. Um, they're, you're just going to have to, to try to come together, and, and, and that's going to be the hard conversations. But... If you want it, if there's a will, there's a way. If you want it to happen, then, then it can happen. So once once we come up with that number, uh, what, what, what dad's going to get paid, um, remember I brought up you want to have all your companies into a different entity? And, and I, I, I started this video with a $10 million gift tax or a $10 million transfer of farm because each person is, is allowed a one-time gift of $10 million. That's like the, that was voted on and that's what it is for right now. It can change with the next president, but right now it's $10 million. That's why I said a round number, your farm's worth $10 million. Let's say you got a thousand acres around here, it's worth five to $8,000 an acre. That's $8 million alone. So if you got any size of a farm, it's, 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 it's worth a lot. That's not counting your equipment and any other cattle you might have. So let's say it's $10 million. Our recommendation is you put the land in a trust, that's a separate entity, the land, with the person that's getting taken the farm over, whether there's two sons and the dad, they get locked into a, a trust. And what a trust does is nothing can happen with that land unless all the people involved sign off on it. And it also gives the person 
the dad, he owns that land until the day he dies. And when he dies, it's then gifted to, to the sons or daughters taking the farm over. Um, that is, that's, that works well because um, you can then, your payment to him or whatever you came up with, he'll become the income beneficiary of all that land. You're technically, you're in, in paper, you're renting the land off of dad that's in this trust with it. He's the income beneficiary. So everything you're paying him, you're writing off uh, for tax purposes for land rent. That's how that works. That's the most efficient way of doing it. Um, and he gets to own the land to the day he dies. And, and so once you do that, you've got your other two companies. You've got your dairy you're running. You've got the equipment. Dad then gifts you them two companies. He signs right off on them. And uh, it's, it's, it's not easy for anybody to do. I mean, you've got to have full-on faith on the person, your kids, grandkids that you're doing this with. But you gift that to them. You're in the four-way. And the trust thing, too, with the land, another good thing is if something happens to an older person or a younger person, if there's a judgment against them, none of that land can be touched. Even if you got into a lawsuit, it's, it's protected. But you then gift the other two companies over. And now what you're thinking, you're probably like, Kip, well, why wouldn't you just put the whole kit and caboodle into a trust? And then when dad or mom dies, then it becomes their farm. The reason we want to gift them other two companies, the operating companies, right? The reason we want to gift them instead of keeping them in a, in a trust and is because when you have it in a trust, it, you're, it's not really relinquishing control. And the, the successors need to be running that business. And the sooner they have a chance to do it, the more they're going to fail and try and succeed. And they have to go through their own growing pains. With your counsel, you can, you're gonna, they're going to help you. But you can't hang on to it. That's, that's just too much control. And they have to, it's different when they own it. Um, and on the flip side, when that older person that, that's given the farm up, whether it's the father or grandfather or mother, when they do die, let's say they do die, and, you, and then it gets given to to the boys because the, it's in a trust. They're they're having heartache. They're upset. They're going through a funeral, a memorial, the parent, and they're trying to do the paperwork. And they're, okay, now we're in charge. Now dad's dead. We're in charge. That needs to be done way before. That needs to be done years before. So that's done. They're running the farm. If something happens to them, it's going to be hard enough to deal with, let alone try to go through the paperwork and then assign who's in charge of the farm and things. that they Get that done with early on. Run the farm so when something happens on the farm, it's business as usual. Now, it could be 100% gifted. There's lots of ways to do this. It's going to be written up. This is where them lawyers come in. They could be, you could gift uh, 20% to each one, or if it's just one son or daughter, 40%. In 10 years, if everything goes right, you're gonna get 30, you know, you can up it from there. You can stipulate anything on this. Um, I mean, hopefully that you can, you've got enough, uh, enough confidence and faith in them that you can gift the whole company to them and they can run the business while you're, you know, while you're helping them, counseling them. But if you have to and there's, 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 questions then then you could do you you don't have to give the whole you can do it in stages like you said anything can be written up the way you you know with these lawyers before this all happens before that that happens i kind of got ahead of myself but i'm just kind of laying out what has to be done you got to make sure all them deeds because there's going to be multiple deeds depending on how many acres you've got they've got to all make sure they're in that company's name that's put in the trust not in nobody's personal name in that company's name for one um, and what we did, and I'll be open and honest about this, and when everybody, uh, we would recommend doing this because the accountants advised us to do it. He's 70 years old and he's seen a lot of farms get into trouble. In our particular case, there's three sons taking the farm over. Each one of our spouses had to sign off. Basically, it's called a postnuptial agreement that in the event of a divorce, you have no rights to the farm. And I know a lot of you might say, whoa. That's, you know, my brother's been married uh, going on 20 years. The reason you do that is for respect of your other brother. Um, and the dad, they could 
easily stipulate that. Mine didn't. We kind of came up with that and agreed it on our own. But if you're passing this farm on and uh, you've got a couple sons and this day and age, you can't trust. It's hard to trust anybody. There's so many things pulling from every different direction. If you're worried about something, you make them sign out, protect the farm. The farm, remember, remember the goal. Future generations, and if that means someone has to sign now, when they sign off on that, and they you you make it where they have to do it, they they have uh, they will be compensated for something. You're going to give them some kind of reassurance because hopefully they don't ever get divorced, and some hopefully nothing ever happens to you. But in the event something did, they sign off on the farm. That's how you handle this, and then you all take out or whoever money's involved a term life insurance policy for 20 years or to as long as you're involved and it goes and the spouse gets it. So that, that's kind of the trade-off. You, you, you sign off on the farm, but you want to protect your family in case something happens to you. Um, but in the end, the, the farm's protected and then your family's protected that way. And the one other thing you're, you do before everything's transferred over, the people taking the farm over, the brothers or the, if it's, Especially, it's only this only happens if it's multiple partners. You you figure out a buy sell agreement, and the buy sell agreement is one of the most crucial things you can possibly do, because that that then helps. Let's say you take the farm over, you sign off, and overnight, you know you you own these two companies, and you've got and a year later one of the other brothers has a come to Jesus come to light moment, and he says. I don't want to farm anymore. I want to get cashed out. It's happened, and it would take, it would, it, it can crumble a farm. So, the buy sell agreement set up like this. Now, they're all different stipulated. They can be completely different, but ours is, our rule of thumb was dad gave us a massive discount on this farm. Yeah, we're paying him, and, and he's happy. He's not getting nearly what he deserves. He built the farm. He, he that's, well, that's understood, but so when it's your turn to retire or cash out of the farm, one of the three brothers, you're in turn given a major discount too. So it'd have to be based, I think it's based on the net worth of the farm, but it's then discounted. I'm not going to get into the exact terms, but it could be a 50% discount because when one guy wants out, and it's gonna be years, it can be prorated in years. Like you, you're not eligible to be out in 10 years. And if you do get out in 10 years, you may not get paid in full in five. Or, But the buy-sell agreements that some of you older guys that understand them, those can be, those can be, you can put them any way you want them, but they're very important. Because if you don't, someone gets squirrely, they can, then they could, they could cripple the whole farm in one swoop of a boom I want out so you got to protect it once you buy in before they you sign you have to have the buy sell agreement in place to protect further and I already touched on the life insurance for the wives um, and then the final thing is once it's, it's all in the motion and you're running the farm everybody's gets added to the bank account the older statesman that was on running they get taken off and it's ran that way because like I said, it, it, it's you have to be able to, it's different when you own it and you can say that you that it's gonna be yours and things, but until that you've got actual sweat or you know, equity in, in the game, then it's different. So I hope uh, I didn't ramble too long. I hope I put some ideas in your head on how you can do it. But basically I always said this, if it takes you to be a good at least thirty years old before you realize what's going on in life um, on a farm. Like I said, I'm 41 now. In my 30s, I went through a divorce. I'm sure my parents were thinking, whoa, this guy, you, you didn't know which way I was going to go after that. Um, so you've got it. That's where the wife signing off comes into play. That already happened to me once. So all these things I'm talking about, um, they all, they'll all play a role. But uh, I wish you the best. Very hard situation. Very hard thing to talk about. The way I was talking, I was so candid about it. We've been dealing with this for, for two years. Um, and when you when you have a good accountant or a good mediator and they, they're asking tough questions and you have to have some good answers because it's no playing around. 
we want this to go through and I can see why people try to not deal with it not face it but in the end you're just you've got to get it done you've got to get the ball rolling there's too much at stake you guys are busting your butts every god seven days a week one day off every three weeks and you're just not going to be prepared for the future That's, we're smarter than that you're, you're we're, we all are smarter than that we've got to dig deep and have them tough conversations the resources are out there the people are out there talk to people that are smarter than we are and uh make sure the farm continues on family farms are dying every day a lot of the reason is because they're not prepared so let's get it done i hope this reached somebody that's going to uh urge you to to get the family farm secured for the future on that note take care blizzards here See you in the next video. God bless.